Hey everybody, this is Ben and welcome to my Timber and Stone tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through starting a game and some of the basic things to look for in a game of Timber and Stone to get you a successful start on your settlement. So when you first launch the game, obviously you've got the main menu, you can go through, check on the options, get an idea of where the controls are, and then of course you just hit new game. And you come up with a name for your settlement, which for me is usually the longest part. But I'm just going to call this one Tootville, be using this for tutorials. And I will just choose a small world so that it it's not going to be too large of a map and it'll run, you know, decently quickly and not take long to load. Okay, so once you pick a name, you're presented with the world map. This is the world that's been randomly generated and you can click on the various squares and it will pop up and show you this location you've selected. You can see here, uh, the dark blue is kind of like ocean, which I'm interested here that uh, fish are abundant. Yes, that is what I was wondering about. They show you the different um, the different uh, stats about that plot of land that you've selected. So we can see the terrain here. This one is marine. The topography is water. There are no trees and it's considered coastal, meaning that there's at least one edge that's completely water. Uh, and of course shows you the mineral concentrations, which is actually surprisingly decent. And then there's tons of fish for wildlife. That's a terrible location. You'd be completely in the water. There's almost nothing you can do there. The lighter blue areas, those are shoreline type areas. You can see there's a river down through this area. There's an inland lake with a river connecting to the ocean. Um, so if you want water, you pretty much want to select a square that's going to be right on the coast of something. So here you can see fish are abundant. We've got grassland. It's flat, medium trees. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and so you can you want to go ahead and select an area, a plot that is going to have the topography you want. Uh, flat is very easy to build on. Um, I actually usually prefer a hillier topography because it results in a lot more interesting looking things. And of course you want to make sure you have the minerals that you'll need. Um, getting frequent com or common or abundant even on any of the wildlife is great. Chickens are one of the important wildlife you want to keep an eye on. Um, because if, especially if you're going to use archers, you'll need chickens. There's the only way to get feathers for arrows other than purchasing them, which can over time, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit slow. Um, the other thing is that this is the 2d world map. You can switch to a 3d view. Oh, let me cancel that. There we go. And you can use the right click to rotate around and you can see <laughs> that the, the height map on here is not quite realistic. The water is a hundred percent flat. There are no like higher inland lakes. But if you want to get a river, like look at this, this canyon here, that looks really attractive to me. So now if I go back to the three, the 2D view, uh, let me see here. There we go. Middle, it's to hold down the middle button. You can scroll around in here, uh, get a better view, zoom in and out as the scroll wheel, hold down the scroll wheel to, to, scroll around. So somewhere in here, you can see this dark gray that is mountainous. Yes, topography is mountainous. Trees are medium and water is river. This looks great. Uh, abundant fish like has all the wildlife, boar, sheep, chicken, and fish. Occasional frequent copper, frequent iron. That's great. Iron is by far the most important resource. Uh, copper and tin are, are second. You need some coal, but not much. But let's let's pick this one. This looks great. So I'll hit confirm and then the game will take several moments to several minutes, depending on your machine to generate the world for you. There we go. Now we've been brought into the location that we've chosen and this one is looking pretty good. So I can hold down my right mouse. I am just able to scroll in a circle, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And you're given the option to go back. If you don't like this settlement location, you can go back to the world map and choose another one. I think this looks fine. Um, a bit of a weirdness on the river on this end, but that is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit settle here. Uh, oh, and it says it says right in this pop-up box, you can use the WASD WASD to scroll around the map. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit settle here. Now, as soon as you hit that, another box pops up, prompting you to place down your settlement wagon or click find new location. You can still give the option to go back, find new location, we can go back to the world map. But you can see I have my little wagon here and you're gonna wanna place this, I find it's best to place it close to where you want your main settlement to be, not necessarily 
right in the center of it, but it depends on how much room you've got. If you don't have very much room, like if you want to settle on top of a hill, you're probably going to place the wagon right in the middle of the top just to get room for it. Uh, in this case, I want to go for a coastal type village, so I'm just going to place it down. This nice area, this flat area here looks real good, so I'm going to place it down kind of next to that so that it won't be in the way of where I want to build things. Fantastic. And one last time, you're given... Once you choose and click where you want the wagon, you're one last time given the option to go back if you want to choose a different location, or you can click start game, which I will do now. And there we have it. We are now, we have started, we have our initial villagers, and we have our wagon placed. So from here, you can click on your villagers, and you're given their names, and you're given a menu that will show you all of their information. Um, and from here on, you can pretty much just hit play to begin the world living and there we have it the world has begun so i'm going to say right here i recognize this guy he's got the flannel and the like the suspenders on his pants he's our wood chopper so i'm going to go ahead and click the down in the bottom right here i'm clicking on this gear and wrench the settings thing and so he is going to be set to independently chop nearest because we need wood and he's going to get wood. So he will go ahead. He's going to pick up an axe from the wagon. There he's got, got a nice axe. He's going to go off and cut some trees for us. Uh, the next thing you need, wood, this game, timber and stone is called. That's your, by far your most important things to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and dig mine. I'm going to go ahead and select. Uh, just click on one corner, go to the other corner and click again. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and select some area here. Now, let's see. Do we have any miners coming along? No, we do not. So we do not have a miner, and we need one. Let's take a look at what these people's professions are. You look like a blacksmith. You might be a tailor. Yeah, you're a tailor. We do not need a tailor yet. So uh, you can click any of these buttons down here. The little hand is the stop button. Um, so we're going to go to tab two where it lists all of the professions and we don't need a tailor right now so you are going to be a miner right next to it there you go so claudia there is going to go grab a pickaxe and she's going to go and chop some stone and then finally we have our farmer katrine 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 so Third thing, first, you need to make sure you have wood. Second, make sure you have stone. Don't spend a lot of time at the beginning digging up dirt. Go and get some stone right away because you want to make sure you have stone supply. As long as you have wood and stone, you can always start from the ground up and build the tools you need to keep playing. If you run out of, if you break your tools and you run out of either wood and don't have any axes or run out of stone and don't have any pickaxes, that's essentially game over unless you can buy what you need from a merchant. And at the very beginning, that's you're not going to really have merchants coming to you. So the final thing we need is to design farms. You come in here and you take a look at what you've got for food. Now, everything is either food or a material. Carrots, corn are food. Potato, pumpkin, and turnip are also food. The other one's cotton. That's a material for building bed and crafting flax that you can make rope, also cloth, stuff like that. And wheat is exclusively used for caring for livestock. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It is also material. You can also make some low quality beds with the, you'll need the, the wheat, the straw from the wheat for that. So you want to right away look at what you've got for seeds. And in this case, I'm going to go with just carrots and corn. We've got four seeds for each. So you want to make a farm slightly larger than what you have for seeds. Um, you're not going to get a lot of food from these right away. So that was, hold on. Oops. If I click on that, it tells me it's a carrot farm. Okay. I always forget. So farms, corn. So I'll put a corn farm right there. And there you have it. That is uh, initial setup. From, from here on out, you can uh, continue. Oh, one other thing. I see we have a forager here. Zachary Winnick is a forager. So let me go ahead into his settings which you can click any of these buttons down here, or you can click directly on the gear and wrench, which is like the actual settings. All of those same buttons are duplicated on the window here. So I can click on this one, and I'm going to tell him to gather berries. For now, just gather berries. Oh, he could harvest some wild wheat. Sure, he could do that too. 
So then he will go off and he will gather berries and that is a forager's a very good initial food supply that will keep your village going. Honestly, one forager can keep your village going for a good number of days on their own. Uh, your villagers at the beginning are not especially hungry. So from here out, uh, we get into some more advanced stuff, but you can kind of get an idea for building a feeding trough for our livestock. Your little villagers here, if they're when they're in their professions, um, they will give you little tool tips to pop up, tell you what they're up to, what problems they're having. Like Claudia can't mine that ore, but that's that's something that she just needs to level up to handle. Um, so one last thing about the farms, I made those farms um, only slightly larger than the number of seeds I had. I have four for each, so they only had four plots can be planted right now. If you make them too large at the beginning, your farmer will spend a long time gathering seeds instead of gathering food. It's a very either or situation with the way the farming works. So you want to keep your farms fairly small at the beginning so that you get more, f you tend to get more food than you get seeds. You want to gather a few seeds, but only enough to just slowly expand. Uh, if you make a very large farm, like I said, the farmer will mostly gather seeds and your village will begin starving. So first get some small farms working well, and the farmer will gradually gather up to about twice as many plots worth of seeds as you tend to have. So you have a full field planted plus another whole equal amount of seeds stored up for each crop according to their field size. So when you get to that point, then you can go ahead and add more farm plots to plant those seeds that are saved up and you'll continue to generate food. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this tutorial up here. That's gotten through the basics of starting up a village, giving you an idea of the initial materials you need to gather, the things you need to watch out for, like running out of wood or stone and gotten a, just a quick overview of the initial setup for farming and food gathering. From here out, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get a carpenter, maybe start training a blacksmith, and of course, take some builders and begin building some fortifications or houses or something along those lines that'll sort of help keep you uh, safer. Uh, it also doesn't hurt to have an infantry beginning to get uh, trained up if there's anything for them to fight after the first night. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you will also come back and watch my next tutorial video in which I will be covering a fairly in-depth coverage of the camera controls. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.